right, folks, there is your closing bell on Wall Street for this Monday as we start the week. Let's take a look where the market's finished today. And the Dow's been a, a wild ride this afternoon, finishes up down 112 points, and the S&P barely in the red, just losing 3%. The Nasdaq really the winner today based on, largely speaking, a big jump for Tesla, solid day for Apple, up 66 points. Here's an interesting number. The S&P finishes the year up 83% of the time when the first five days finish in the positive, so a barometer perhaps of the year ahead. Let's take a closer look at the broader markets and bring in Matt Stuckey, Northwestern Mutual Wealth Management, Senior Portfolio Strategist. Matt, nice to see you. What do you make of the market action today? And getting back to that stat, the first five full days of trading, what have we learned? Well, I think we uh, we have a continuation of what we've been dealing with last year, which is a lot of volatility, <clears throat> a few days up, a few days down in a row. And really what you're left with is kind of where you started. And it's kind of how we kind of see 2023 shaping up. We do see a, a narrative uh, pivoting from inflation worries towards recession worries, which just means until the economy troughs and the Federal Reserve starts to back off, you know, this, this volatility back and forth is likely to persist. Matt, you mentioned recession worries there. What are you expecting? Do you think we will get a recession and how severe could it potentially be? Yeah, that's the big debate right now. You know, the debate between recession versus soft landing. And, you know, we're kind of starting to talk about our outlook from a macro perspective as more of a soft recession, uh, something that is shallower and probably shorter than prior recessions, especially the most recent ones where we saw massive reductions in GDP and increases in unemployment. Uh, but if you look at what's in front of us, we have the bond market that's as, as deeply as, as inverted as uh, we've seen in the last 40 plus years. We have leading economic indicators from the conference board that are negative 7.3. You've never been at these levels before and not had some sort of recession here in the United States. And you, know, you put on top of that, though, what makes us optimistic that you know things are going to probably be a little bit less severe it's it's the shape of consumers it's the shape of businesses and banks all well capitalized with strong balance sheets we should help to weather the storm pretty well yeah you mentioned those banks those bank earnings start pouring in on friday what do you expect that we'll learn at the end of the week I'm not sure we're going to learn a whole lot uh, from banks as we as we look to the upcoming prints uh, later on this week. Capital levels should should stay pretty pretty resilient. Uh, credit performance should stay pretty good, although normalizing back towards pre-pandemic levels. Capital market activity, however, from investment banking uh, as well as equity and debt issuance and trading, should be you know somewhat muted as a continuation of what we saw last year. But you know the bright spot is you know banks are still lending. They're still seeing net interest income rise, which should help help put uh, together fairly decent results. But, you know, the, the big question a lot of investors are going to have is around credit. And, you know, that we do, we're not going to know until we start to see the labor market start to crack a little bit. How much crack do you think we're going to see in the labor market? Because I think the big question is whether or not we need to see substantial job loss, how weak it needs to get in order to see significant inflation improvement. What do you think? Yeah, right now, I, th I think we're seeing some mixed signals in, in labor. And you know, to be honest, the labor markets have been a lot more resilient than we would have expected at this point. You know, last Friday we got the jobs report, and you know, the headline number was pretty good. Uh, but you know, underneath the surface, there were some mixed signals, which I think kind of sparked the rally this past Friday. We saw uh, average hourly earnings miss expectations and come uh, come in underneath uh, what the market was expecting. That's that's a good sign in terms of. Um, Inflationary pressure starting to come off as it relates to labor tightness. We also saw average uh, work weeks move lower, uh, the second lowest uh, level they've been at since the pandemic started, which just means that companies are seeing moderating demand. And as, as a result of that, they're starting to require less hours from their workers uh, to meet that demand, which should bring the overall labor pressures uh, down a little bit, which is what the Fed wants to see. Speaking of the Fed, Mary Daly says inflation low 3% later this year. Is that where you project? We actually think it might be a little bit lower than that. Um, if we're looking at the inflation story today, uh, you know, just look at the last five months of, of CPI prints. We're going to get another one this Thursday, and we think it's going to be a continuation of this trend, which is strip out the lagging parts of, of inflation. Uh, shelter is, is the big one here. Uh, and, and look with what you're left with. And it's a cumulative negative inflation number, uh, a negative 0.2% over the last 
five inflation reports if you strip out the lagging uh, uh, shelter uh, component, which, as we all know, uh, enters into CPI with a one to one and a half year lag. And if you're if you're looking for kind of your more up to date kind of pulse of the market. Uh, shelter inflation numbers, those numbers are negative. If you're looking at home prices or uh, month-on-month rent rent uh, rent levels, those are moving lower. And so that's kind of baked into the cake for kind of where inflation is going to likely be as we move throughout 2023 and, and into into next year. Um, you know, the downward pressure is certainly starting to, to show through here. So Matt, how does all this then shape your investment strategy and what you like now? Well, you know, we're fairly balanced as it as it relates to overall equities versus fixed income. Uh, we did move a, a, a sizable amount into high quality fixed income at the end of the third quarter, um, as we see a lot of value restoration into into the bond market. But you know, we don't necessarily think it's it's time to just shelter up and and, and hide away from risk assets. Uh, there are parts of the market that we continue to find uh, attractive valuations. Um, th- those aren't necessarily found in the S and P 500. We do find those, however. And U.S. small caps and U.S. mid caps and international equities that have very large value spreads relative to where the S&P 500 trades. But even within the S&P 500, if you take more of a value factor, look at it, uh, there are values there that trade you know, 11, 12 times forward earnings, which gives you a lot of cushion. If, if estimates get cut as we move throughout this year with the recession on the horizon, that uh, a lot of valuation discount is already kind of embedded into the price here.